Snackers. My name's Matt DiNapoli. I am a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Uh, we have a returning guest here, and he's actually going to be building on a uh, episode that we had previously, episode 62 with Mel Delgado, where he taught, talked to us about uh, managing hyper-converged infrastructure with a, a platform called Harvester. Um, and so Jock is on here to talk to us about uh, adding Terraform to that layer. So Jock, if you don't mind introducing yourself first, and then we'll get into um, how Terraform can help us manage hyper-converged infrastructure with Terraform. <laughs> Um, so I'm Jock Reed. I'm developer advocate over cloud native technologies. Um, yeah, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, Harvester, taking it a little bit further with some Terraform, a little bit of data center automation, that kind of thing. Before you get started, can you just do a quick uh, rundown of, of what Harvester is, how it fits in with the um, infrastructure management conversation, and then really kind of quickly touch on high level uh, what hyperconverged infrastructure is for people who potentially didn't see Mel's previous episode. Right. So just to kind of recap what Harvester is, Harvester is um, basically a software based data center automation layer. Um, it's in the realm of hyperconverged, which is the basically the unity of networking, compute, memory, disk space, storage, all that kind of stuff. Um, into one big nice package. Most people that if you're in data center technologies for a while, you'd be familiar with this with uh, vSphere, vCenter from VMware. Um, this is basically to run um, virtual machines on top of your bare metal servers. So for Cisco, that'd be like your UCS servers, that type of thing. So yeah, that's, uh, that's basically what Harvester is trying to achieve, but they're doing this in an open source manner and they're doing it on top of cloud native technologies, specifically Kubernetes. Um, so they're, the base layer is actually, everything is run in Kubernetes and Kubernetes acts as the, um, the hypervisor or the um, virtual machine um, software layer on top of uh, the bare metal that allows you to spin up your virtual machines, um, but also allows you to spin up containers as well um, alongside your virtual machines and to manage your data center um, from a more cloud native perspective. So so the, my hypervisor in this case is Kubernetes? Right, that's correct. So um, the, oh. the the underlying part is it's, you're basically running a container and you're running um, a vert, and, and that container is inside of a Kubernetes pod. And um, that container is actually housing a virtual machine. It sounds kind of crazy, but um, they've actually been proving this technology for the last three or four years. Um, Harvester runs on top of a technology called KubeVert, and KubeVert came out um, in CloudNativeCon a few years back, and they've been working on this technology. And so Harvester kind of wraps that up with uh, um, KubeVert and Longhorn, um, and which is Longhorn is a storage software package right. for uh, Kubernetes, and that allows you to be able to um, manage your block storage and use that for in this case, it, um, your virtual machines, but also your containers that you run in pods and things like that. So, um, so yeah, that's a, it allows a more efficient way of being able to um, store images and spin them up and, and then also be able to just run basic containers alongside your data center infrastructure. So uh, there's a there's a couple of layers then that I could think about because you're here to talk to us about how Terraform plays nicely with Harvester. And so um, I could see Terraform being used to manage the underlying infrastructure that Harvester is running on top of. But I also sounds like we could l leverage Terraform to manage the uh, virtual infrastructure that's being managed in Harvester itself. Which part are we going to be kind of talking about today? So we're going to use, and, and you brought up a very good point. Um, Terraform obviously has a provider for Kubernetes specifically. So you could actually spin up mm -hmm. your pods or your deployments or your daemon sets or your services or ingress or whatever you want to do with uh, Terraform on Kubernetes. So you could do those normal Kubernetes functions on top of that. Um, we're actually using the Harvester provider, which is going to allow you to integrate to harvesters, spin up your virtual machines, um, your networks, your um, your volume. So you'd use that for your disk, for your 
for your virtual machines and then also be able to download images um, from the internet to like, so images for your virtual machine. So that could be an Ubuntu container, it could be um, a K3 OS container, it could be, if you had uh, access to it, you could have a CSR router from Cisco. You could download that and um, do some other stuff with that if you want. I mean, to. I guess, I guess it's, <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like a controller, right? Like if you think about it, you, you sure you could go in and write an Ansible script to run and automate your entire you know infrastructure, or you can talk to your DNA center to do all of that for you if you come from the networking world, right? And so that mm -hmm. is essentially the same where we're talking. We're using leveraging Terraform to talk to the controller, in this case, Harvester, to do what we needed to do. For compute resources. For compute resources. Sense. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Right. And that's and conceptually, they're exactly the same. So you're right on with that. Um, can you kind of dig into to what you wanted to show us today, Jock? OK, so sure. Let's uh, let's take a look at that. Um, so right now I have up here just and you probably saw this last time with uh, with Mel. Um, I have the uh, Harvester dashboard up here. Um, right now I have it set on virtual machines. Um, and you can see we have a few things that we've been testing and running here. Um, then you also have your volumes and these are the different volumes that represent um, the different disks. As a matter of fact, there's our one for our CSR router that we did have installed there that we were testing. Um, here's the images for those uh, different uh, virtual machines that we have running there. Um, and then also, since it is Kubernetes, we can actually separate um, each of our via uh, virtual machine infrastructure with namespaces. So um, in Kubernetes, that's a, that's a nice logical way um, to, even if it's in the same subnet as another service, you can actually say, hey, no, if it's not in this namespace, then it can't contact or connect to services that are not also in that namespace. So you can do the same thing with virtual machines. Um, that essentially works here, and that's that's what we have. Um, so sounds like VLANs. Sounds like VLANs to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, what's what's crazy is that you can also use VLANs, and so and we're going to see that too oh. as well. I'm going to when I switch screens here. I just want to. Um, I still need to do a little bit of a readme here, but I have a. Um, a a repo for what I'm working on with um, Terraform. And so um, kind of just want to run through Terraform, the basics of that. RV for Harvester, <laughs> LOL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought they went together like friends. So I was like, you know what? Terry and Harvey, those sound like friends to me. Uh, <laughs> like, so you say, uh, we like to have fun around here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that fun? Uh, I just, uh, <laughs> yeah, lots, lots of fun for sure. And that's what we do. Okay, so let's start with this. Um, so with any kind of Terraform, we, we obviously have to have the provider um, to be able to use this to um, communicate um, with the, the Terraform uh, CLI program. And then it knows, um, so it knows what to do for being able to automate the infrastructure. So it downloads a, a binary that it says, oh, this is a, this will allow me to talk to Harvester, um, but this is the information I have to give it to be able to do that. So um, the provider obviously is Harvester. Um, here's the source, which is on the heart, which is on the site here, which I have it pulled up here. These are some of the examples right here. Um, so the example usage is a similar, they're actually on a little bit higher version than I am since I started using this uh, a few months back. Um, but I would define the version here. Um, so this is going to pull the source um, Terraform provider from the Terraform registry. And then um, right here also, we also need to, um, for the provider, we also need to find the cube config. Um, so we have to go on Harvester and uh, download the Kubernetes config because it is Kubernetes. And we use that as um, part of the communication and authentication for Terraform to be able to appropriately talk to Harvester. Um, and so it util utilizes that. Um, that said is we, we then have different, I'm not going to go into the super specifics of this just because of time, but um, we basically have in each of these resources, so we have the Harvester virtual machine. Um, I have two of them here. 
Um, I basically just have a, an Ubuntu um, 20.0.4 um, server, and then I have some definitions for a cloud in it at the bottom that give it that. I even have a um, proxy because we're behind a proxy on this particular harvester server, so I have to define that in there so I can still pull down my packages and things like that. Um, that's defined here in this cloud in it, um, but then it also defines like the disk and um, network interfaces, which we'll get into in a second. Um, but then I have another one that's a it's a it's a desktop as well. Um, technically, it's actually the um, same as the server above, but it's installing the desktop on top of it. So that way I can still use it as a desktop and I can still use the automations from cloud init on top of that as well. Are you going to actually run this? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to run this. Um, and then after that, so basically everything in the virtual machine, I won't get into too much of it again, just because of time. Um, and so all the like the volumes and the networks and the images and here's the images we're going to download. Um, although we're not using the K3OS image, uh, we are going to download that one. And then um, we're also going to download the um, Ubuntu 20.04 server as well. Um, and so we'll see that here. And so we'll see those changes pop up here. Just to make sure there's no, I'm not fooling anyone here. We can, we can see that there, I don't have those images up. Ubuntu 20, K3OS are not already installed on here or uh, mainly just the tube and two desktops. The images aren't available right at the moment. Um, and we're just going to do it in the default namespace um, to make sure we have that. So let's I'll put this here. Switch back over to our screen. So I got Visual Studio pulled up. If you guys haven't found figured out yet, Visual Studio codes our favorite. <laughs> Yeah, uh, for sure. I think I, I saw something on Twitter the other day that said uh, that some there was like a few people that were riffing on the best product that Microsoft has ever created was VS Code. So um, I think I'm definitely on on board you with make that. A, you could make that argument. <laughs> uh, this seems like a really quick, and no, I shouldn't say quick. I mean, there's some elements of understanding that that needs to get it, but it's a, it feels like a good way to get started on the concepts of hyper converged infrastructure in an open source manner. Um, and, and that's pretty exciting because I think, you know, if people think about this concept just as, as 50,000 foot as you can get is this is very complicated stuff. But if we break it down to, hey, we're setting up VMs, hey, they need to have storage, hey, they have to be able to talk to each other. And here's the source, uh, you know, operating system that we need to run with. If we bear it down to that, I mean, it becomes a little bit more um, palatable, I think, for people who are just getting started in that space. And it's definitely wow, not a new concept that, either. Look right. how quickly that that spun up, Green. It's still starting though. Well, okay, fine. Yeah, but at least starting. it's harvester is so, all over it. <laughs> to be to be fair, so there so it does have to wait um, okay. because it has the download, unfortunately. So uh, I don't. We probably won't have time to see it fully running because it's downloading these images brand new. Um, we could have shortcutted it by downloading them in advance. Um, but I also kind of wanted you to see, we can also automate the actual, like if you have in a, a repository or, um, you know, a site that where you have um, images available and you're setting up additional harvester clusters, you can actually reach out and then get those, um, those different images from there. And so these are the public ones. Maybe you have one because you're behind a corporate firewall, you have one that's right. um, specifically on, your your servers um, behind that firewall, you can download them there. Um, so you have a, a, a few a few uh, a few things that you can accomplish with this, not just um, the ability to spin up you know volumes and virtual machines. You can actually reach out and get the images themselves. This is pretty great, actually. Um, and unfortunately, this is all the time we have. But before we let you go, I know Matt has to say something, but I have a question for you. Sure, please. Um, does this, and it's a, it's a quick question, Does do you know if I could take my Terraform plan and run it in Terraform Cloud and let, allow it to integrate with Harvester, or is that only local? So you you should be able to, I, I haven't tested it though. I, wanna, I don't want to, theoretically, yes, you should be able to run this in Terraform Cloud. If your Harvester instance it. is accessible from the public internet, I'm guessing, yeah. Then it right? should be good. Exactly. Okay, good to know. Okay. That's, that's the All good right. point.
Sweet. Thanks, Jock. So uh, as we wrap up, yes, Kareem was correct. We are, we are running short on time. Jock, uh, this is a, a, a great introduction to being able to use Terraform with Harvester, and so we appreciate that. Snackers, please check out Terry and Harvey um, at, in Jock's um, GitHub repository. Uh, if you want to work on more instances, he'll be working on that and building it up. But this is how you can get started with that. Um, but there is one more kind of big thing we got to talk about before we go, Kareem. This is our last episode before our live episode at Cisco Live. I, I mean, know. I'm like crazy excited. We're going to be on a plane in a few days going to a conference that's in person and I'm just super excited about it. And I'm I, really I'm pumped to see you, Matt. I have not seen you in like two and a half years. So yeah. And, and uh, I've made some changes. My hair is longer. <laughs> yeah. I've noticed. I've noticed. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see you. I'm excited to see Jock. Um, I'm excited to see all of you that are able to make it to Cisco live in Las Vegas. Um, in what will actually next week at this time, <laughs> we'll be there doing our live episode of DevNet Snack Minute. So we hope to see you there. Yeah. Um, so thank you guys again for uh, hanging with us today and checking out another episode of DevNet Snack Minute. We'll see you live next week. See you, snackers.